Hello, my name is Yolanda Davis. I am a committer as well as part of the PMC for Apache NiFi. And today I want to talk to you about one of the newest features in the NiFi 1.10 release, which is focused around back pressure prediction. And even though this is a smaller feature, it's part of a larger initiative that's part of the analytics framework that was recently introduced to help support providing additional insights in terms of trends and predictions on how our flows operate within the NIFI campus as well as within the ecosystem. So back pressure prediction is the first kind of feature that demonstrates the potential behind the analytics framework. And I just wanted to take some time to show you not only how it works, the information it provides, but also how to configure it and how you can tweak it to work within your needs for your flow administrative, uh, yeah, for your flow administrative needs. So, all right, let's get started. One of the things that you'll notice, I have a flow, just a very basic flow, general flow, generating a flow file and logging um, some things. But you notice I have my um, log attribute processor stop because I want to have my objects build up within my connection within my queue to demonstrate how we can see predictive uh, capabilities. So as you notice, my queue is growing, but with the back pressure prediction enabled, I'm able to see some additional information within the connection. So the first thing to notice, and I'll zoom in just a bit here, is when you hover over, whether it's the side that looks at the object count or the side that looks at the uh, amount of uh, content you have by size, you see additional information beyond how full your queue is. So in this particular case, we can see that there is a prediction on when, how, or how large or what the percentage will be of that queue in the next hour. So in this particular case, the queue is gonna be about 73% full in about an hour from now. Also, it gives you information on, hey, given this trend, what's the time it's gonna to take to hit back pressure. So if things keep increasing as they are, in this particular case, we'll see back pressure in about five hours. If you were to flip it on the other side, we don't have uh, back pressure thresholds, I think, are as, as uh, stringent on the other side. It's definitely, I'm only generating a small amount of content here. So you don't see it growing as much, but you have the same type of information. But the context in this case is around the sizing of the queue, the size of the content within that queue. So in our particular case, it's only 0% full. It's saying next hour, it'll probably still be about 0%. NIFI really is only showing, you know, it doesn't show decimal, to the decimal point value. It's just showing the whole number value. So in this case, we'll still be less than 1%. Um, and then at this particular trend, maybe two years until you would get back pressure as it relates to the content size. But on the other side of the fence, we see that back pressure is happening sooner rather than later. And if you are an administrator, this is information that could be very important for you to dig in, find out what's going on. Why is this trending up? Uh, previously, to get this information, you would have to extract metric information perhaps to other tools whether it's prometheus or grafana to look at things or some other dashboard tools that can look at trends and warn you there but now we can use nifi to provide a visual warning one other detail that i didn't get to is if you notice in addition to the tooltip enhancement there's a little bit of a tick mark there that will also show you uh, the predictive place where this queue would land uh, again, this particular instance is around object count. So we'll see that that 74% within the next hour uh, is where you should reach it based on the current prediction is based on what it has observed. So very simple, but hopefully very powerful. And just one other thing to note is you don't have to only look at the canvas to get that information. We can also pull that information by looking at the endpoint. So let me start looking at uh, a particular connection endpoint. So I can get that same information. Uh, it might be a little bit detailed because it's down to the milliseconds, but I can pull that by pinging the NIFI API and going to the statistics endpoint for a connection. Now, right now, 
NIFI is only doing these type of predictions for connections, but it's very possible that the community could look to extending that in the future to apply for other objects that we want to predict trends on. So the next question is, how does all this work? What is the analytic framework using or doing in order to do these predictions? Well, just a little peek behind the scenes, the first thing you can do is look at the configuration. So let's use that as our starting point. I'm going to pull up, this is the NIFI uh, properties file. And it uses several different settings in order to enable this. Let's focus on these settings here. And also let me make this view just a little bit bigger. We'll use my little stroke here. There we go. So let's focus on these new configuration settings that help us to control how analytics work. And I also use, we'll use this as a bit of a framework to talk about what's going on behind the scenes. So I said it earlier, but I just want to emphasize that even though this new prediction capability is available, it's not enabled by default. So you'll need to set the uh, predict.enable property to true. By default, it's set to false. Also, there's another setting called the predict interval. So basically, how far do you want NIFI to predict into the future? By default, it's three minutes. But in my particular case, I wanted to see about an hour ahead. But that could be configured to however way you need it. There's another interval measure uh, that allows NIFI to query on the previous observation. So in order to figure out a trend, it needs to look at the history of how this connection is working and the way it does that is it uses its internal component status repository. So it needs to look at the last um, in number of minutes or hours of observations, depending on how you configure it in order to develop a trend or a model of a trend. And so by default, again, this is three minutes. Next, it uses a particular model. So NIFI has a couple of models that basically can be trained using those observations or those metrics that you query, that it queried using the status repository. And then using that particular model, it can train to find the trend. And then once that trend is found, then you can say, okay, what is my predicted uh, time that I'm going to reach back pressure or what is the predicted object count? So by default, the trend or the model implementation that's been used is a simple regression that's based on the ordinary least squares um, calculation. So I won't go into all the fun math that's involved there, but anytime that you want to put, you have a plot of lines, picture a scatter plot of line, oh, sorry, of points, and you want to plot a line that, that basically models the trend of how, where those points are going, whether they're trending up or down. Ordinary least squares tries to find, do the best fit. So the least amount of space between all of those points that could fit that line. Uh, the, it's very simple. Uh, our, what we're dealing with time as well, so it's not like a time series model, but it works better than computing the average, right? If we were to take all those different values that we got and got the average and predict on that, we want to say, hey, you know, we want to be able to trend it better than predicting the average. And that's what an ordinary least squares provides. There are other models uh, that we have in the framework. A simple regression is another type of model, but you want to choose the model that works best for you. So if neither of those models are a great fit, you can create your own model. So this framework is extensible for that. The next setting is around scoring. So once you have a model and you have observations, the key is trying to figure out whether or not that model or the trend that you have it's a really good representation of what is occurring or what's happening. So we need a way to be able to assess that or score it. And so we have two properties that allows us to score the models. For this particular model, ordinary least squares, we can use what's called the R squared calculation, which basically, I kind of hinted to it earlier, didn't mean to, but R squared allows you to look at the predictions that the um, trend line would give you versus just calculating the average and saying, hey, are you at least doing better than just calculating the average and returning that as a prediction? And if so, you know, here's how much better you are 
in doing that. So that is like one way that you can score a model. It's, it's one uh, score that is provided with that model. There are different values that can be accessed, but it depends on the model that you implement or that you use. But in this case, we're using R squared. And R squared, it will range from zero to one. So you have to pick out what is the best score for my needs. And in our case, what we want to say is any scores that are above 0.9 is a good model to use and would probably give us a decent prediction for trend. So with the R squared value, the score threshold that is used here says to NIFI, okay, if this model, once it's been trained with all the different observations that we saw, if this model has an R squared value that's over 0.9, we think it's a good model to, is a reasonable good model with a low amount of error to produce a prediction. Because remember, this is prediction. We might not get it right all the time, but we want to have something that is reasonable, that gives an idea of where something is trending so that people can respond or react or investigate it as needed. So even though it's a little kind of data science-like, it is a bit of a science and maybe sometimes a bit of an art, to figure out what is the best R squared that give you a value that you can, you can uh, refer to, along with all your other tools in order to monitor how your flow is doing. So going back into our case here, I'm going to actually pull up, I have debug running, so you can see a little bit more of what's going on behind the scenes. So if you turn debug on, you can see, and you have the predictions enabled, you'll be, Magnify will report how every step of the way in terms of when it is refreshing the model with new data for a connection, what the model is scoring. Uh, and also there's other values as well that I mentioned earlier that you can use for scores. So for example, total sum of squares is another value that could be leveraged with ordinary uh, least squares model. And these particular predictions or the very specific predictions that you see, they are available also on debug. So here's something interesting. And actually I have a lot spewed out here. So I'll go all the way to the end so that we can get to recent times. Notice that our scoring is doing really well. Um, the sum of square value isn't as high. So you know we don't have too much error in our predictions. But let's say what happens when our trend changes. Let's do that. So what happens if all of a sudden you solve the problems? And uh, I'll actually solve it by just starting the log attribute, which is basically going to flood my um, flood my log, but also drop this queue down. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then stop for a bit. Let's see what happens to our predictions. So what's interesting is okay. The first thing is we're still seeing some of the older predictions. And, and why is that, you might ask? I just cleared this queue. Why is it still saying I'm gonna be a full queue and a 100% you know, queue so soon? Well, the reason behind it in that initial empty is it still at that time had the older predictions in. So the older predictions were still part of that model and so it takes NIFI a certain amount of time to get enough observations in order to create uh, newer predictions. And in my case, it was actually pretty quick to get that newer prediction. But in my particular case, it is highly driven or highly based upon our setting for, or my setting for the status repository and actually the snapshot frequency. So as I mentioned earlier, NIFI actually queries information on the connection and the history of the connection in order to determine trends using the status repository. And so how frequently it can query that repository is based on how often data is saved. So in this particular case, I have data saving every 20 seconds uh, for by default, this value is normally one minute, but you may find in certain situations that you'll need to, uh, you might need to change how often snapshots are taken. 
such that NIFI will have the most late, the latest information as soon as possible in order to make a prediction. The other side to this is not only ensuring having enough snapshot data available is important, so looking at the snapshot frequency is key, but also how, you, how far back you query may be important as well. So in my, again, in my case, I'm querying off of the last three minutes. So I only want to look at the last three minutes of history. But if I were to go back in further in history, I might have a lot of different data points that have a lot of um, variety or variance in terms of, hey, one, day my Q, one time my cue was really high and then it might have dropped and then high again. So the more variance you have, the, um, the, I guess the more challenging, I should say, to get a prediction that's absolutely accurate using the current model, using the default model. So when you use like a linear regression, if you were to be able to plot that line, uh, you know, the, the, the variance might be high. You have a lot of increasing cues and then decreasing cues and your score might not be as great as the 0.99 score you saw I had a bit earlier. So those are the situations where you would see if the score it gets a little lower, in my case, the score went back up as I was trending back up. But once if the score was getting a little bit lower, then you would see the R squared value drop, especially if you had debug going, and you would see that that threshold would be reached. There might be some instances, however, where you would want, you don't mind if that R square value is a little lower, you don't mind if the predictions aren't as accurate, and maybe because you want a wider query interval and you want to be able to notice those trends, uh, so you could increase it. But then you have to be very wary when you, sorry, you could decrease this value, but you have to be very wary because decreasing your score threshold also means that you are making a less accurate model and accurate is a strong term but a less uh, a model that may have an even more higher error is a better way to put it and so when the errors become higher it might be off in terms of time and off in terms of object count and NIFI can do some detection of that and so it may not produce a prediction if it's saying hey I can't you know it becomes up with a time that's really in the past for example like an estimated time of back pressure it is say hey this predicted time is actually before you know after the time that's already passed you know this is something that's in the past I'm not going to return those values so it's something that you may want to play with and tweak or it might work out that out of the box things work for you and you might just find yourself only tweaking with this predict interval, only trying to see further out in the future based on three min minutes of uh, past behavior. So even though this feature is pretty small in terms of everything that it'll show you, it is more setting the stage for what we like to look at as flow analytics, understanding the trends and behaviors of your flows in advance such that you can act or you can do a better job in managing resources that NIFI uses. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us on our community. You can always go to nifi.apache.org, which is our landing page, of course, for all things NIFI. Reach out to all the mailing lists, uh, to individuals in the community who can help you out. I'd be more than happy to have and help answer any questions that you have. And definitely, if you would love to contribute not only to the analytics framework, but even more, check out our contributor guide and also feel free to ask questions of the community. Thank you so much. And looking forward to all the great feedback that you have on the analytics framework and back pressure prediction.